What's up my friends, welcome back. I wanted to share with you a design for a project that I've been working on for some time, something like more than a year, because every time that I have some, free, uh, some spare time, I can work on the design of this uh, project. And this will be a fully 3D printable RC helicopter, and it will be based on the Arduino. Now the Arduino part and the electronics is not very difficult because I've already made a lot of drones and this will fly just like a drone but instead of controlling four motors you can control some servo motors and that will control the angle of attack of this propeller in order to control and stabilize the helicopter. So that is not the difficult part. The difficult part is to make the 3D design for this rotor and for the entire body of the helicopter. Now this part here is everything that I have printed till now, but this is like the 8th or 9th version because I had to change a lot of times all the parts in order to fit in such a small place and also to be able to fit the propellers, the servo motors and also to move and have the, the bearings and so on. But don't worry, I will show the design that I have till now and what I am planning to do and also the parts that I want to use. And this will be a big helicopter, have in mind that this will be one of the propeller, so the diameter of the, the spinning propeller will be double this, so something almost like one meter, and that will be the span of the, the propeller, so this will be quite big. So I'm not sure if I will be able to test it here, but when I will have time and I will go to my, the village of my father, I'll try to test it there. And I also want to build something like a cage for testing made out of some metal bars and just test the propeller at the motor and then the servo motors and by moving this up and down I can control and stabilize just the propeller and if that works that means that the helicopter, the helicopter will also work just by changing the PID values. Okay guys, that being said, let's get started. Hey guys, just before we start, I have an announcement that I will place at the end of the video. It's a special announcement for all the community, for all the Electronoobs people here on the channel or of my website. So please go check that out because it's very important for me and for this channel. Thank you very much. So let's start with the video. Okay guys, so let's start with the part list that I have for the rotor, which is the main part of this project. And because the rest is just some gears, maybe some carbon fiber tubes the Arduino, the servo motor, some wires, and so on. But the most important part is the rotor that will control the angle of attack of the propeller. So I'll show you the part list and a little bit of design and at the same time compare the parts and the design that I want to use uh, for this project. So let's start. Okay, so this is the final version of the rotor and it works quite well. As you can see, it is a little bit used. So the screws there are broken. Let me just focus there. So I'll have to use a different resin. In a moment, I will show you the resin that I've ordered some kind of nylon so it will be a lot harder to break but as you can see here where the screw is that part should be a little bit thicker and also made from a different material but this is not the first version as you can see i have a lot of more parts and these are not all the versions a lot of them got thrown away because i have to make like eight or nine version till i got to this which is what i want because each of these parts has a bearing inside and has to move in the right direction and so on so let me show you what i've selected for the movement, for the rods and for the bearings. Okay guys, so right now I'm in Blender and this is the design of the rotor. So as you can see, this is the gear that I've been, I've been talking about. This gear will be connected to the rod and then connected to some sort of motor. And this will be a brushless motor because we have a lot of torque and speed and it, ha it will be something like a 2204 motor. It doesn't have to be that big, but just to have a lot of speed. And maybe with a 3S or a 4S battery, we get that speed. Then we connect that to the rod and that rod is connected to this middle part here, which will rotate with the propellers. And at the same time, we have these arms and this will rotate on, this, on their axis. And as you can see, let me just move this on the X direction a little bit. Inside of this uh, arm, we have that screw that I've been talking about. Then we have here the, the first bearing, which is a normal bearing. And then the axial bearing, because the force will be applied on the exterior like this. It will be a centrifugal force, so we need an axial bearing here. That's why I've added two of these. The first one is for support, and the second one is for the force that will be applied on the exterior of the towards the exterior of the of the propeller. So we start with a smooth rod, and this will transfer the power from the motor to the propeller. This will be connected to the motor using a gear. I will show the design in a moment. This is a five millimeter one. I've tested also with a six millimeter one and a six point five one but these are too heavy so i've decided that i'll go with a five millimeter one because i have enough space to add the screws and everything 
to be connected to the rod. So yes, this will be connected to a gear and that gear will be connected to a brushless motor and that's how we transfer the power of rotation to the propeller. And the next part will be this one here. And this will be connected to the servo motors and that's how we transfer the angle of attack. And these parts uh, won't rotate. So that's why we have that bearing in, in the middle and also that ball. And I'll explain you why we need that uh, in the middle. In order for you to understand why we need these parts, I have to explain you how a helicopter works. So, this is the rotor of the helicopter. And each of these arm of this, or yes, an arm, can rotate on its axis. This one can rotate, this one can rotate, and this one can rotate. Now we could have two, uh, three, four, five, a different amount of these arms, but I've decided to go with three, because that in that way we'll have a lot more uh, stability than using just two. Uh, 180 degrees in between. With three, we have uh, 60 degrees in between. So, if you imagine this will rotate like this, if we have connected a propeller like this one in here, when this will rotate, it will change the angle of attack, as you can see. So, when the propeller is 100% uh, flat, it won't push any air downwards. But if you spin it just a little bit, the angle of attack is bigger, so it will push a lot more air uh, downwards. And if you spin it even more, it will push a lot more air downwards. So just by changing the angle of attack, you can change how much air will go downwards. So the thrust of the propeller. In the same way, you can uh, rotate it in the other direction and push air upwards. That's why you will see sometimes the RC helicopters going upwards and downwards very fast because you can control if you want to push air upwards or downwards. But now you might wonder, if you change the angle of attack and change how much air will go downwards, or upwards, you can only control if the helicopter will go upwards or downwards, because if you blow a lot more air downwards, it will go upwards. But how can you control the, the direction of movement of the helicopter to the left or to the right, or forward or backward? Well, that's the ingenious part of this design. Actually, once you understand it, you will see how easy this design is. So just imagine that that will be the front part of the helicopter, this will be the back part, uh, this will be the right part and the left part. So let's imagine that you want to go forward. While this is rotating, this will be fixed in place like this, connected to the servo motor. So we can rotate the rotor without rotate this part here, which is the important part. So as you can see right now, I will try to place them exactly flat. As you can see, the angle of attack of each of these is zero. So there is no air pushed uh, downwards. If we go just a little bit lower, now the angle of attack, as you can see, we have some sort of angle. If I go upwards and downwards, I can change the angle of attack. So if I go just a little bit downwards, now the air is pushed back uh, downwards. So in that way, the helicopter will go up. But I want to go forward. So while we are rotating, we keep all this at this angle, but we place this one, the part here, like this. Just a little bit tilted forward. Actually, it's not tilted to frontwards it's tilted backwards like this. So as you can see, this part here now has the angle of attack a lot bigger than the other two. And while we are rotating, the part will change the angle of attack just by keeping this part in this position. As you can see, this one now has the angle of attack bigger than the other two. And if I rotate it even more, as you can see now, this one has the angle of attack bigger than the other two. In that way, the air that is pushed on this side, is a lot bigger, a lot more, than the air that is pushed on this side. That means that the helicopter, since this, uh, the air here is bigger, it will go forward. And the same will happen in all directions. Just by changing the angle of attack with this, with, uh, with this thing here, we change which of the propeller and on which position, in this case right here, will push the air uh, downwards more with more force or with less force. And with that, we control where the helicopter will go. I think that's quite easy to understand, right? Here I have the same part with the zoom. And as you can see, when I move it, I change the angle of attack. And let's say that I only want to change the angle of attack of this one. So that will be something like this. As you can see, this is almost flat, but this has like 30% of angle of attack. And if I rotate, as you can see, now this one is flat and this one has 30% of angle of attack. And if I rotate, now, this one is flat and this has 30% of angle of attack. And obviously this is made very fast while this is moving, but in this way we control in which position we want more angle of attack so we blow more air. So that's, uh, that's how we go forward, backwards, and in all directions. 
But there's one more thing that I should explain and that is the back propeller of the helicopter because the helicopter has one main rotor and another one that is on the tail. Okay, so the rear propeller of the tail of the helicopter is very easy to explain and that's just basic physics. If you have something rotating very, very fast, since this motor is rotating in that way, let's say clockwise, it will also make the same force counterclockwise applied to the helicopter. So if I spin this in this direction, it will apply a force to the helicopter in the, other, in the opposite direction. That means that while this is spinning like this, the helicopter will be spinning all the time. Let's imagine that this is the tail of the helicopter. We add another propeller here that can apply force to the sides. So if the helicopter is spinning like this, that propeller will apply air in the other direction. So it will stay center all the time. So if you detect that the helicopter is start, uh, is start spinning on the yaw axis, just apply more force or less force on that back uh, propeller and like that you can keep it stabilized in that place because the force that's applied from the propeller, the big propeller, to the entire uh, machine, to the entire helicopter. That's why we have another smaller one behind. So we have three pro propellers, then we have this system, this will be connected to those servos, I will show the servos in just a moment, and this will go just up and down, changing, changing the angle of attack of this uh, parts here and that's how we control it and then this will be connected to the body let me just move this back like this this will be some sort of body of the uh, of the helicopter this will be just a carbon fiber tube because it's very light but it's also very strong and on the back we'll have another propeller this is just as an example it won't be a propeller with an angle of attack this will be just a normal propeller connected to the to the brushless motor and just by changing the speed you can change the throttle of that uh, propeller and like that let me just select everything it will move on the uh, on the yaw direction like this just by changing the speed of that of that propeller. Also what I wanted to show you is this other project. This is just one of the a few projects that I made and as you can see we have a lot of other parts and just to show you that that was not the first version that I've made and this was not the first, this was not the first, this was not the first. I've made like eight or nine versions till I get to this and these were months of work because I don't have enough time, I'm not the best 3D editor and this have to be perfect. I mean the size from here to here from this part here to this part here has to be exactly the length that you need because otherwise this part here will get out. This has to be the exact size. The bearings inside have to be the exact size so the hole that I'm making has to be, uh, fit perfectly on the bearing and so on. And I've made a lot of changes to this. For example, the angle of this part here has to be uh, of exactly 35 degrees in order to get exactly here and so on. So it was a lot of work, trial and error, I was printing the part, assemble it, something got wrong, I was changing the, changing the part once again, and so on. So as you can see, for example, this was some of the first version, it has only one hole here because I wanted to fit a pin inside and that will hold a screw, and that didn't work. And then I decided to make some holes here so I can place a nut inside, in that way the screw could come from the exterior, let me just show you here. So if I move this here, the screw can, can come from the exterior, get inside and then we'll get fixed into these uh, nuts that we have here inside of the holes. And that's how I decided to just fix everything in place with the bearings, the screws and the, the washers. And just to show you the servos, I've decided to place the servos something like here. As you can see, we have some, some holes here for the servos. So they will go like this. We have three servos and this one will con be connected uh, through this hole to this part here. This one will be connected here. And this other one, which I don't have the connector, I'm not sure why, but this one will be connected on this part here. So with three servo motors, we can control all three axes and make the helicopter go forward, backwards, side to side, and so on. And then the motor, the brushless motor, I think it will be here below, I'm not sure. Uh, this is not my part, this is a part that I find online, but I will make my own part and give the size that I need for the servo motors that I'm using, because are not this one, are just a little bit bigger, and so on. And that's it for the design. And the resin that I've ordered is this one, is anti-impact resin durable. It's something like a nylon-like. And as you can see here, we have some pictures and this looks a lot better than my resin. So I hope this will uh, fix the problem. It hasn't arrived yet, but once it, ar is, it arrives, I'll make some tests to see the difference between my resin and this resin. But as you can see, it's advertised to uh, withstand a lot more tension and force. So I think this will be just like a mold injected part of nylon. I hope I hope that because that will fix my problem with the with the parts. So this is the resin that I will be using. Anti impact. This is from Resi One. I never heard of, the, of this uh, company, but I hope they do a great job. So now that I've explained all that, you can understand why we have these parts because the big one is connected to the servo motors, and it will be fixed in place. It won't rotate. It will only move like this. 
but the small one is connected to the propellers, to the propeller support, and these have to rotate. That's why we have this uh, bearing here, which is the middle one, let me just take it out if I can. Okay, I think it is glued in place, but we have a small bearing there. So why do we have the metal ball in there? Well, that's because when you change the angle, since this is a solid rod, it can bend, this part won't be able to bend if it had um, plastic or just a solid uh, square in it. And since this is a ball, it's round, we have a cavity inside, so it will rotate on the same axis. So as you can see, I can change the angle of this without bending the rod. That's why we need that metal ball in there. And I've uh, choose metal because if I use plastic from the friction, I'm pretty sure that it will get melted. So I had to design this part here, the small part, this one, to have exactly the size of the metal ball and then just press it inside. I will show you the ball that I've used in a moment. And also this bearing is special because it's very, very fine. It's not uh, too thick and it has 1.6 centimeters in diameter or something like that. Okay, so these balls are for jewelry, I think. These are not machine balls, are not perfect. And if you find something like this with a perfect diameter, just comment below and share me the link because these are not perfect. And that's one of the problems that I have till now because this is not a perfect round object. It has some deformations because this is not machine for uh, industrial grade uh, machinery. So, but anyway, I will use this for now for the prototype. And then I have these uh, bearings here that will go like this. And this is maybe the most easiest part of this project. But then we have this other part. This is the one that's connected to the propeller and will change the angle of attack. And let me explain you why I had to buy these kind of bearings. These are side bearings, I think they are, they are called. And I'll explain you why we need this. So this here is called an axial bearing. And the difference is that the normal bearing will uh, eliminate, eliminate the friction on the same axis, on the same axis of rotation, but this will eliminate the friction when there is um, friction on the same plane. I'm not sure if you understand that, but let me, uh, the, but hear me out. If you imagine when this is spinning very, very fast and also has the propeller attached, that will be very heavy. So when this is rotating, it will apply a force on the out, uh, outside, like a centripetal force or centrifugal force. I'm not sure how this is called in, um, in English. But imagine that this part here will be pulled away very, very strong. So if you have a normal bearing, that will have a lot of stress on the lateral of the bearing, not on the axis. That means that it will have a lot of friction and this will, won't be able to move like this because it will have a lot of friction. So in that way, that's why we use these axial bearings that move side by side. I will show you a zoom onto, it, onto these bearings and you'll understand why we need this. And I will also show it with the screw which is what we have inside of that mechanism. So here we have a normal bearing and this is the axial bearing. As you can see, this has the balls like this in such a way that it will eliminate the friction when on the same axis of rotation. But this will eliminate the friction on the perpendicular to the axis of rotation. As you can see, this will have the rotation like this on the side. Let me just add the screw and you will understand it even better. Okay, so this is the middle part that is connected to the rod. And from here we have a screw like this that will get out. So then we have to place this one here and this should be able to rotate freely like this. So imagine that screw that's getting out of this part is this one here or this one here that has a normal bearing. If this part while rotating will have a force like this onto the outside, it will create a lot of friction between this part and this part because this wants to separate. So if you were to use a normal bearing like this one, let me just see if this will focus, okay? So if you want to use a normal bearing like this one, if I want to pull the screw on that way, on the outside, it will create a lot of friction here because this is made to eliminate the friction like this on the rotating axis, or rotating axis. But if you use this one here, which is an axial bearing, let me just make a zoom here. As you can see, this one, if you pull it on the outside like this, it will eliminate that friction, friction because this one has the balls and the plane on the other side. That's why we need this kind of axial bearing. Okay, so extra to these bearings and the balls. I've also bought a lot of extra parts, for example, a lot of small screws. These are just 0.5 millimeter screws, 0.2 millimeter screws. These are very, very small because we are work working with small parts. Let me just see if I can focus here. We also have self-locked uh, uh, nuts. And then I've bought these parts here. These are the connectors between the part that is moving 
and the part that will change the angle. So this is very, very important because, because it also has a ball in there. Let me just focus here. It also has that ball there. So in that way it can move in all the directions without have, uh, having to bend the entire rod. So these are very important. I bought a few of them because they are different size. We have some washers, very fine washers, and I also bought this uh, metal ball with screw, and that will be connected later to the, to the part here, and this will be connected to the servo. So the servo will be connected to the screw here. Some, uh, some insertion uh, nuts, these are made out of brass, and just to add screws to the plastic, and also these are some uh, rubber washers, and this will go inside here in order to apply pres pressure to that bearing that I've shown you before, which is the axle bearing. So that's pretty much that I, what, what I have for the rotor, obviously also the propellers. This cost just like $5, they're made out of plastic and they don't wait too much. Okay guys, so this was the update for this project that I have till now. I'll share the parts that I designed till now in the description below if you want to download them and change them and make any iteration that you want and then share the results with me. Because as I told you, this is a very difficult project because I had to make a lot of attempts and a lot of small changes and I'm not even sure that it will fly or maybe it will fly but the plastic won't withstand the pressure and as i've shown you i bought a different kind of resin this is made out of uh, something like nylon so when it will arrive i'll make some other prints with my uh, msla printer and see if those will be a lot stronger because as you can see this one already broke so i'm pretty sure that this won't work so share your opinion below and download my files check the entire design and my ideas and let me know what you think will this fly or not keep up you guys so guys, as I've told you, I have an announcement and that's, I think that you deserve an explanation that's why I make, I'm making this kind of video because this is not a project with a script, this is not edited, this is something that I recorded in like one hour here in my workshop and that's because I'm getting a little bit burnt out because as you know, I'm now a father, I have a daughter of uh, five months which is great, is the best thing that happened to me but at the same time I don't have enough time for my projects but not only that that's not the main problem because i still have some time to make maybe instead of four videos a month i can make two videos a month a month the problem is that i think youtube is avoiding my channel or the new algorithm that they've made is kind of hating my channel because if you take a look at the, at the views of my videos it's amazing that from a channel of more than half a million subscribers I have videos with only 4,000, 5,000 views and if you enter in the analytics of the, those videos you can see that only 30% or 40% of those views are for subscribers, the rest is from YouTube recommendation and it, it, it used to be like that from YouTube recommendation but YouTube doesn't recommend my channel anymore and I'm not sure why, I mean I think I know why and I'll explain that in a separate video that I will try to link below because I don't want to make this announcement too big. But the last drop was that a few days ago I've posted a picture on my community tab asking for a Q&A question so you can post the question there and I will answer it. And usually like I remember that the last year or, or two years back I had like 200, 300 questions and I even had to place a comment please don't repeat the same question and I'll try to answer all of them and it was impossible to answer all the questions because I had like 200 or 300 questions. But now I've posted the same picture in the same time at the end of the year and on, on Christmas, I usually make a Q&A and I only got two questions the first day and maybe like eight more questions the second day. And that's it. I only have 10 questions for the Q&A. And that's amazing because my channel has more than half million subscribers. So basically my content doesn't show up on your page. So YouTube doesn't recommend my content, not even to my community, to anyone. So that being said, I'm not sure how this will affect my channel because if I don't have views, First of all, I don't pay my rent using YouTube uh, ads because YouTube pays a very small amount. But I do pay my rent using the sponsors and Patreon and so on. So if you want to help me there, you can maybe be my sponsor or sponsor me on Patreon. But you see, if I get low views, not only did I lose the money from the ads of YouTube, but I only use the interest of the sponsors. And I'm afraid that the sponsor will say in a few months, hey man, your views are too low, so we are not interested in uh, placing ads on your channel, channel anymore. And that will mean that all this will end. Because that's what I've been doing for the last seven, eight years. That's my main job. And I've invested money in this workshop. I had to rent another uh, apartment to have this workshop. Everything that you see here is for this channel. And if I lose that, 
I'm not sure what I will be able to do. So if my content helps you, the smallest thing that you could do is to just share the video, give a like, comment below, and make YouTube think that this kind of content is still interesting because I think YouTube hates educational videos. Because anytime someone posts, what happens to an iPhone if you throw it from the second floor? It, get, it gets million views. But if you show what's inside of an iPhone and how it works, the technology and the electronics, it doesn't get that uh, amount of views. And I've seen that in all the electronics related channels. Even Electroboom is affected. I think Great Scott posted something that the views are going down. Dave from the EV blog has a lot less views than it had, it had before. So I'm pretty sure that YouTube changed the algorithm in such a way that the sensational and the cool stuff will get promoted and the shorts, because that's the main problem because of TikTok, it affected all this and now it's not based on followers, it's based on what YouTube thinks. So all the other channels with learning and ed educational channels are getting less views. And my channel I think is kind of banned because I only get 4,000 or 5,000 views and that, that's not even 1% of my entire channel. Anyway, I don't want to bore you anymore with this stuff. I'll place a separate video just below and I think this won't be a posted video. It will be on my community tab so you can go and check it out. And then I think I say everything that I want to say about YouTube and that I'm a little bit burned out. But anyway, happy holidays, Merry Christmas and also Happy New Year. I hope that you will have a great time. See you, man. Don't worry, I will still post videos. <laughs> this channel is not over yet, but I just wanted to say that, but that I'm a little bit afraid for the future. We will see. Thank you very much and keep up you guys.